Our adventures with the Coleco Atom here at Vintage Geek are far from over because we have one game left to play, and that game is Jeopardy. Today's we've done a few videos now on the Coleco Atom, and we've talked about some of the games available for the system. We've certainly talked about some of the digital data packs, the proprietary cassette format. And in last week's video, we got to talk about some of the disc-based games for uh, what I consider to be one of the more rare peripherals for the system. But today, I want to cover another game that uh, is definitely one of my favorites, and that, of course, is Jeopardy. And we do have the floppy disc version of Jeopardy for the Atom, so I'm really curious to see uh, what this game is going to play like. First thing it's telling me to do here is use the smart keys to select the number of contestants. So we're just going to go with one player, which looks like it's the four key. I feel like they should have probably used the one key for that, but it's just me. Player one, are you a returning champion? I am not. No. Oh, this guy looks pretty cool. Would you like a different character? Well, I want to see what the different characters look like, absolutely. So we have three choices for our uh, character here. And we'll just go with the first one. I'm just going to be vintage. Now we got Joe and George. Got a full lineup here. Are you using a question pack? I'm gonna go with no on the question pack right now so we can see what it looks like by default. Okay, it looks like I get to choose a category. We've got art and artists, US coins, exotic cities, television, automobiles, and lost and found. I'm gonna go with uh, television. I mean, this is the 80s, right? Let's go with middle of the board. How about $300? Series where Broderick Crawford snapped 10-4 as he signed off. Oh, Joe, you got it wrong. I don't even know what you answered though. Oh, George, wrong guess there too. I don't know. Highway Patrol, wouldn't have known that. Let's see, how about automobiles? We'll go with an easy one. Source of power of the now classic Stanley automobile. Oh, well, let me try this. How do I buzz in? What was, I guess we have to do steam? Yay, I got one right. It's interesting that they make you choose the beginning of the phrase. You have to choose the what was, what were. We're doing all right in automobiles, let's keep going. Type of auto engine or a tomato cocktail. Oh, what is V8? Good job, Joe. Designed for military use, Brinks was first to use them commercially. I'm gonna say tanks. Oh, Joe's pulling out now, breaking out the good answers. Models of Ford, Chrysler, and Cadillac are named for cities in this European country. No, oh, Spain. Taxi manufacturer. Oh, checker. I'm in the green again, guys. How about lost and found? Ray Millen's cinematic alcohol bender. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's just do another lost and found. Another word for an orphan left, for example, on a doorstep. Huh, found them. Okay. Oh, art and artists. This is not my category. Moulin Rouge was featured in the works of this diminutive artist. Even if I would have known that, I wouldn't have gotten the spelling correct. The only sport covered weekly during its season by all three networks. Oh, pro football. I wonder if you would have gotten it right if you just said football. Ten groups of Israelites taken captive in 722 BC. One of the lost tribes. Okay. Exotic cities for 200. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Baghdad? All right. How about US coins? Silver coins were last minted in US in this year. 1964. Here's television again. This cable station is a video jukebox. It's gotta be MTV, right? That was back when they actually played music. Weekend update is, oh, Saturday Night Live. Some things don't change. We're pulling ahead. Things are looking good. CBS canceled this pair in a 1969 censorship dispute. Oh, the Smothers Brothers. Lost and found, I guess. Atlantis in the Atlantic or Moo in the Pacific. Lost City? No, oh, Lost Continent. All right, George. Exotic City. Site of Churchill Roosevelt 1943 Conference and Bogart Bergman 1942 Trist. Casablanca, okay. Appropriate name of Canadian province discovered in 1497. Oh, George is really, really pulling out the stops now. Kipling said, the flying fishes play on this road, the road to this Burmese city. Oh, good. George needed to come down a little bit. I don't know the answer to this one, though. Mandalay. Going back to art. Grant Wood portrait of a farm family. It actually represents a father and daughter. American Gothic? All right. Ooh, there is a daily double. I was wondering if that was going to happen. You may wager between $5 and 1000 Well, let's make it a true daily double. Coins bearing mint coating D were made in this city. Denver. Yes! These words first appeared on coins in 1864, and a 1955 law required them. Just taking a guess here. 
All right. And one left to go here. Dimes bearing this president's picture were issued at Franklin D. Roosevelt, okay? Oh, so they do have the full double jeopardy. Some of the hasty pudding club? I have no idea. Oh, Harvard. I don't feel like that's one of their most well-known subjects. <laughs> this flag is red, white, and blue and features a Lone Star. Texas, right? Solar system, college, racing, state flags, comedians, and cats and dogs. Let's see what their comedians look like in 1984. Of his golf play, he said, I've spent almost as much time in sand as a camel. <laughs> Bob Hope, that makes sense. This service academy is the site of U.S. Silver Bullion Depository. West Point? I don't want to take a chance for two grand. I'm not going to guess it. Oh, I'm not confident enough. Ha, huh, it was right. West Point. Should have guessed it. 1928, a German Shepherd became the first of these canine guides. Seeing eye dog, I'm assuming. All right. Uh, let's just do solar systems. Try to clear these categories for the largest numbers. The god for whom this planet is named went mad and ate his children. <laughs> Slow your roll, Joe. Oh, Saturn. Crooner, who's probably the most famous alumnus of... Didn't read the rest of the question, but good for you, George. Car acceleration contest. Its name makes it sound slow. Drag race. Nice. Now I'm back in control of the board. Let's go to cats and dogs for a thousand. What the fog comes in on, according to the Carl Sandburg poem. Little cat feet? Clearly I'm not up in my Carl Sandburg. In the proverb, it killed a cat. Curiosity. It's a close race with Joe right now. Let's just see where this comes out. Cats and dogs. 600. Cat breed famous for sapphire colored eyes, which are often crossed. Siamese. Ah, oh, yes. I got another daily double. Things are looking up. Definitely not doing a true daily double on this one, though. I feel like that's way too dangerous. 1,200. Russian scientist famous for psychological experiments with dogs. Pavlov, right? Yes. Got a lot of applause on that one. This wild and crazy guy once left his audience on a snack bar. I was just going to say Steve Martin. Dark patches on the sun's surface which attract magnetism, radio, and TV. Sunspots? All right. I guess we'll just finish out that category. <laughs> I got all the daily doubles. I'm just going to go another 1,200. It's the planet named for Cupid's mother. That's probably Neptune, right? I'm just going to try it, I guess. Oh, Venus, of course. One of the planets that I literally couldn't even think of the name of. Racing, I guess. Barbara Jo Rubin and Robin Smith were among the first females in this profession. Stock car racing? Uh, jockeys. Oh no, Joe's in the lead. George Washington's picture adorns the flag of this state. Is that New Hampshire? I was thinking because of Mount Washington. Oh, Washington. I guess that makes sense. All right, Final Jeopardy. Each player takes a turn entering their wager in question. Final Jeopardy category is famous quotes. I don't remember what the other players had. George, I think, was in the lead. I think he had over 5,000. I'm probably going to have to at least wager 2,500 or something. He called our system government of the people, by the people, for the people. I was thinking it was Jefferson, but... Uh, well, at least I'm on the champions list with a whopping 1,300 points. Definitely shouldn't have let, uh, rushed that uh, final Jeopardy question. And to all of you out there watching right now, yeah, that was pretty dumb. I find it interesting that they didn't actually say what the other contestants did in Final Jeopardy, nor did it give us an actual final tally. The disk drive is reading again now, so I'm not sure what it's going to do next. Uh, yeah, obviously I want to get my prize. I didn't know there was a prize involved. Put a sheet of paper into the printer so that the top is near the printer head, then press done. Our printer is not currently functional, even though it's providing power to the system. Now I'm super sad. I want to know what it prints out as your prize. Now my curiosity is getting to the better of me. I'm going to have to get a full replacement kit of the ribbon and everything for the printer. We're going to have to get this fully working just so I can get my Jeopardy prize. I had no idea this was going to turn into this much work. I'm pretty impressed overall. I mean, the gameplay is great. Timing seems to be about right. The graphics look good. The only thing that I feel like they missed in this was the actual Jeopardy music. They probably didn't want to do that for copyright reasons, I'm guessing. But other than that, it's a pretty solid game for the Atom. It's kind of a shame that it didn't get official released. Now that I've gotten a chance to actually play through a regular game of Jeopardy, I want to see what we can do with the Jeopardy Writer software. This gives you the ability to inject your own questions into the game using these kind of question pack discs. I'd like to see if we can add some vintage geek type questions to a round of Jeopardy so that hopefully people that come to visit the museum will get to experience the game and get some very topical trivia questions that might be a fun part of the experience. Essentially what this involves is you have to run the program called Smart Basic first, which is how we're going to load the initial program. We're loading the question software now. Walter Software Company presents Rev7 of Jeopardy Writer. Yes, I do want to use Jeopardy Writer. Thank you. 
So the user drive is going to be C. We only have one floppy drive and we're going to read. I read in the instructions that the easiest way to do this is to pull an existing question pack and then modify that rather than try to start a new game. And I tend to believe that's probably legit. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the question pack disc. We're gonna read. The other thing that's weird about this is that there is apparently some index on the question disc that tells the system which game was played last, which games have been played so that it knows to try to give you something fresh when you start the game. The problem with that is that it's actually saving that information in some kind of a block header, but I really don't know how to modify that. So I'm going to take a chance with game two, hoping that that will be the next game that it's going to play so I can see my question come up. Game number two, here we come. This digit that shows up on the left-hand side of the screen is apparently a loading progress indicator. When you count all of the categories together, including six categories in each round plus Final Jeopardy, it has to load all of those categories, including the questions and the answers, before it will let you move on and start modifying things. But it definitely takes a while to load all of these questions. So we've loaded all of our categories now in the Jeopardy writer, and it's asking me for a vector. According to the manual, this means basically which category and which question, the zero being the actual category name. So I'm going to start with zero, zero, just change the very first category in this game, and let's see what that looks like. So currently, that category is academies. We're going to change this. So we've got our Vintage Geek category created. Now I can go to the first question in the category if I put in zero, comma, one. So here's the question and answer that was on the question disk already. I guess the easiest way to do this is to backspace through all of it. Thankfully, our uh, museum staff have come up with some clever questions for the Vintage Geek category, so I'm going to pull one of those up and see if I can put that in here. And to end the actual answer part, there's a special character, the bracket. Now I get to choose the preamble to the question. And of course, the question that we're talking about is, what is the Commodore 64? So that would be two, what is the appears that the answer has to be a single line. You can also do wildcard characters, so basically if you're worried about the person spelling something wrong, you can put a special character which will accept anything in between those two letters. So that should match up even if someone doesn't spell Commodore right or they only put one M in. Released in 1982, it holds the record for most sold computer of all time. What is the Commodore 64? Now we can move on to the next. Should be 0, 2 now. Looks like there's more real estate for the question space at the top than I was giving it credit for. I probably could have fit that last one in a few less lines. The first issue of this magazine touted computers as the world's greatest toy. What is Byte? This arcade-based company got its name from the Japanese word for strike or hit. What is Atari? Besides Tandy, this company got its start in Leathercraft. What is Coleco. This two-word phrase is generated by many programming languages to test that the program is working. What is Hello World? Now this is the last question in the category. We've done all the questions plus the category name. So at this point I should be able to actually save the data, which is going to rewrite all of the 12 different things, actually 13, including Final Jeopardy. It's going to write that all back to the disc. Again, this is game number two on the disc, and I'm hoping that that will be the game that actually plays when we try to play it the next time, but we'll find out for sure shortly. So we've now written the contents of these new questions and the question files to the disc. Again, I used the original one and just overwrote a category to make this a little bit simpler. Starting with a whole game would take a lot of time, <laughs> and uh, just based on the process, probably a little bit more time than I have at the moment. It says that when you get to the Use Jeopardy Writer screen or prompt again that everything is ready to go. So at this point, I should be able to actually run the Jeopardy game and insert the question pack. And hopefully, if uh, game two is the next game on the disc, we should see some of these questions come up. All right, let's select our contestants. I wonder what happens if I say I am a returning champion. Hey, I'm on the list. All right, so I just put in the number. I am using a question pack, a very custom one as a matter of fact. Oh no, it did not load the game that we uh, created. It looks like the first category here is Potent Potable, followed by State Capitals, Odds and Ends, Cops and Robbers, Elections, and Notorious. Not sure which game on the disc this is. There's no actual index that I can access. The good news here is that we have stored the questions on the disc. It's loading the disc pack correctly, which means that uh, for anyone that plays this game, there's a one in, I guess, 26 shot that they're going to get the questions that we wrote, which uh, will be a lot of fun for some random visitor. So despite your best efforts, you answered correctly. <laughs> Suck it, Trebek. <laughs> I think that's going to officially conclude our discussion of the Coleco Atom, at least for now. The uh, Jeopardy experience is great. I really like the gameplay and what they've done with it here. And uh, experimenting with the question pack was actually a lot of fun, even though it was quite a bit of work involved. I'm anxious to see that game come up in reality. Eventually it's going to happen. Someone's going to play the Jeopardy here at the Vintage Geek Museum and those questions are going to come up. 
which will be a lot of fun. If you like what we're doing, if you like vintage computers and talking about them or learning more about them, we make videos like this each and every week on the channel. We encourage you to like and subscribe. Also be sure to check out the merch store. We've got a lot of cool items over there, like the shirt I'm wearing today. We've got coffee mugs and other holiday gift ideas that you can check out. All the info on that is in the description. Until next time, I'm Aaron, and this has been Vintage Geek. <laughs>